Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about the shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of The 100, as well as the latest episode of Orphan Black. Now, the season finale of... The one hundred. It kind of. I thought it was kind of very interesting. They jumped right into this episode. Not like it was. Not unless it was my TV glitching up. But they didn't even include like a. Oh, previously on the one hundred, it was like straight into the episode. Uh, we have like Clark removing the chip from um, Abby's um, from Abby, and it's just kind of like her tearing up. She's. Just, I'm so sorry for all the things she did to Clark. Remember, she like put all those those scalpels to Clark, and was kind of torturing her. And it's just kind of like she's like, you know, it wasn't you, mom. It was Allie, so you shouldn't have apologized. And it's basically like you know, Antares, they're brain dead. They're locked in there because there's no way to get to the bottom floors because they made sure to seal those off. Plus, you've got the guys on the outside, like they're climbing up the tower trying to get their way to that um, room. So it's like, okay, what are we going to do now? So, Clark gets it in her head that basically the only way to make this happen is by basically implanting the flame into herself. That essentially she's going to have to get someone, basically a transfusion from Antari to kind of get the blood flowing into her veins. Because as a uh, chosen one, kind of as a commander, because she has a blood of commander in her, once you put that into uh, Clark, kind of get it circulating in her body, the flame won't kill her. So that's what they do, and when they implant it, Clark goes, okay, and now I know how to stop Allie. That basically the deactivation, like the method to taking her down is in the City of Light. So Clark has to take a chip, and she does, and goes into the City of Light. And it was kind of interesting because the flame did protect her up to a certain extent because it kept Allie as well as anyone within the City of Light from actually seeing her. But because there were complications on Antari because her body was basically shutting down because she was brain dead. And uh, basically blood wasn't pumping from her body and getting to Clark. So it started like, you know, the flame started attacking her. And it's like if they don't keep it up, if they don't keep the blood pumping through her veins, it's going to, in, in Abby's words, literally melt her brain. And kind of seeing what the uh, flame will do to anyone that um, it doesn't, you know, that it doesn't kind of, you know, isn't, you know, a commander or whatever. And, you know, it, Allie ended up finding her out and was like, you know, got people there kind of beating her up. And it's just like, oh, man. And all of a sudden, who do we see? Freaking Lex. It was like, yeah. And you're just reunited. And they, they got a couple. Like, I think they got at least one or two kisses. And I was just like, oh, that's so. And she was saying, I love you. And it's like, mm, it's just like, oh. And so I'm so glad to see them together again. It was just like so, like, heartbreaking. It's like, Alexa. I'm so glad we got to at least see her one more time. Because she actually, you know, it kind of makes sense. Because I thought it was kind of interesting. I guess it's because it's Clark, the reason why it worked like this. But each one of the previous uh, commanders exist inside of a flame. A bit of them exist, in, like, with each... With each commander that dies, a little bit of themselves is kind of downloaded into the AI. A little bit of their, I guess, their essence, their soul, their personality, their mind, their mind consciousness, whatever you want to call it. So even when it's all said and done, like, you know, Alexa was like, I'm, all, I'm always going to be here with you. So that was kind of nice. Uh, at the same time, I um, kind of want to jump to this, like the whole like uh, on, um, Octavia situation, because Bellamy kind of saw the way she, you can, you saw how like determined she was looking at um, Pike, the way she was looking at him, just like pure hate in her eyes. It's like, yeah, you can't trust her. And then like he's telling Octavia to be careful and just uh, Pike is like, OK, we're not like basically the guys are coming. Uh, everyone's coming up the tower and they're about to come into the window. He's like, OK. We, you know, we'll go by Bellamy's rules. We won't, you know, use offense unless we need to. So there was like, okay, just try and knock them out. And when they're coming up, Octavia slashes Pike's leg to kind of make him wounded and kind of feed, kind of throw him to the, the wolves, essentially. And man, oh man, I was just like, because I guess it, it, I can only interpret it as like, oh, she was going to go back to Bellamy being like, I'm sorry, like, I couldn't do anything. They came, they attacked, they ended up ripping him apart. I feel like she would have lied about that. But Bellamy showed up in time and was able to save Pike, much to like Octavia's chagrin. She didn't. I don't think she liked that because she wants Pike dead because she doesn't even want to fight alongside of him. I mean, really, uh, you know, that led to like Bellamy kind of excusing it. It's just like because Pike's because Pike's essentially saying like get Octavia under control because we need to work together in this situation. And Bellamy's kind of like I get why she's pissed. Like in the regard guards of like you know all those people they killed and stuff like that. Like because Pike tried to justify it being like. 
When Lex had died, those, uh, those, all those people would have come. They would have turned on us, and they would have killed us all. And Bellamy's like, no, I mean, really, you don't. We don't know because truth be told, is I had to look at them as the enemies just so I could feel good about what I was doing. To feel like, feel like us killing them had to paint them as the bad guys so that we could feel like we were the good guys. And he's like. That he whether whether it's the right thing or not, he doesn't know. He doesn't even know if he's doing the right, you know, doesn't know what the right thing is anymore. Like he's kind of lost of it. He's like, no matter what the case may be, I will always like have to carry that. I'll have to I have to live with myself for that for the rest of my life. And it's kind of Pike because Pike didn't show any sympathy for what really happened. I mean, the only reason why he shows any sympathy, well, I mean, even in this situation now, he still ain't shown any sympathy. It was just kind of like, yeah, we have to work together. But it's like you really thought it was just going to go down like that. We did see um, Nate's boyfriend kind of apologize for, to him. It's like, I'm sorry that situation came down to this. He never really said anything, but I'm sure he was stu still super pissed. I mean, there was a situation where he ended up saving Octavia earlier in the episode. I was like, oh, maybe this will lead to... I essentially was going to think, like, okay, Octavia's not going to kill him. Basically, I thought one of the other grounders was going to, like, either kill him or, like, about to attack him. And Octavia's like, no, we'll, we'll imprison him for this. It's like, nope, Octavia stabs him, kills him right there in front of everybody. I was like, wow, I... I, because it was just kind of like they kind of locked eyes on just like okay when everything said and I was like almost like he was like okay we're good now right and it's like nope dead and when she did it too she just walked away so I don't I mean because to her she doesn't really have a home anymore she can't go back to Sky Crew because she kind of threw Sky Crew away a long time ago when she kind of chose the grounders over there but she can't really go to the grounders because you know truth be told is the only person like she even said at the intro her only home was with Lincoln and it's just like her, him killing Lincoln is unforgivable like I feel like out of anything maybe maybe killing all those people that Lex has sent there to protect him maybe that could have been forgiven but it's like I don't know it's out of anything it's just like her, him killing Lincoln is just unforgivable more so than anything else so I feel like if it was just about killing those 300 uh those warriors then she would have just had him locked up but it, it's because he killed Lincoln the, the man she loved that's why she did that. Um, but essentially, we end up finding out a big, uh, big reveal because it's like you know, uh, Clark ends up you know tapping it like you know Raven ends up tapping her way like unlocking the door, leading Clark to meet up with Becca, who is essentially basically a personification of the second AI, and basically Allie's there and they're kind of it kind of becomes like a like a like angel versus devil type of situation because it's like you can pull the switch but Allie's like there's something you should know if you pull that switch you're killing all your people and I was like what do you mean I was like I was interpreting I was like oh like is this going to be one of those situations again that basically is going to be disconnecting their minds or something it's like no that's not what she meant essentially the bombings like that took place wasn't it, like a hundred years ago that earth was kind of abandoned basically all the bombings that uh Allie did basically to control um population well basically there's like a lot of nuclear plants that weren't completely destroyed that are still active and that basically some and there's at least seven of them that are kind of like hitting like like they're kind of already activating so that basically in in less than six months uh basically all of them will activate and essentially the entire like the 94 uh, percent of the Earth's surface all over the place, the entire Earth's surface, 94% of it will be, you know, covered and like essentially un become uninhabitable because the radiation will be so intense from it. And even with their immunity to radiation because they were living in the sky, even the sky people won't even be able to, well, sky people slash um, the grounders really because the grounders aren't affected by radiation neither. The only people that were left that were affected by radiation were specifically the uh, mountain people. But it's like even with their immunity to radiation, even they won't be able to survive this. So it became a question of like, let Ali save them by putting them in the city of light to uh, give them a safe haven from what was coming. Because that's what she did all this because her uh, drones ended up discovering this about four months ago so that's why she kind of kicked her plan into action was because of this discovery and so it's kind of like do you set all your people free but the moment you do that you're cutting off their lifeline to salvation from this upcoming situation and do you try to handle it yourself because there is no chance for hope because there's no way you can deal with the situation like this 
And it just comes down to it, like, you know, even if Allie is trying to somewhat do the right thing, it's like, basically, Clark was like, why don't you disconnect them and give people the choice and let them make the decision? But Allie, like, but Rebecca was like, no, because Allie, in her mind, thinks she's doing the right thing, so she would never release control. It's like, if you knew this situation, why did you force them? Like, you could have easily just, like, came and informed them about the situation, and then they could have made their decisions then, but she had to take initiative. Essentially, um, it's actually the name of the episode was, like, preservation. I can't remember the term Rebecca used, but essentially it was defined as, like, a decision being made by something outside of man, like, human, like, control or something like that. And so, basically, you know, she made a decision to wipe out, you know, six point some billion people just deal with like population issues and like you know i mean truth be told is like she's the reason why this situation is what it is because she reacted the way she did she killed humanity but you know clark decided that she was going to choose like you know it needed to be their choice you know, in this matter, and that it couldn't be just like, oh, this had to be a decision that, you know, Ali had to make. It's just like, no, it's something that they had to make. They'd have to be the ones to face it because it's like, you know, because it's basically, you know, this whole mentality of what this city of light is to kind of escape your pain. And it's like, no, what you need to do is to, like, you can't, running away from your pain doesn't do anything because that's what she did. That's what, uh, Clark did after what happened in Mount Weather and, you know, nothing good came from that. So, basically, she knows running away from your pain doesn't do anything. It actually causes more problems. So, she's like, the point is to overcome your pain. So, it's basically give everyone back control. End up flipping the switch. Allie's dealt with. And, like I said, the situation is what it is. But, you know, it's like everyone's back to normal, both Grounder and Sky Crew. But they do have to deal with this situation because Bellamy's like, why do you look like you're not a girl who saved the world? She's like, because there's still danger. I haven't said, we haven't seen the world yet. So it's like, it does make you wonder like, where do we go from here with this situation? Like to me, I was thinking that basically everything was going to end with, um, basically them making Clark the commander. I didn't kind of completely uh, skip over the fact is where we had, uh, to me, one of the like grossest part of the episode was having, uh, Abby cut open on Tari's chest and literally having to pump her heart, manually pump her heart to make blood pump so it can get to Clark. Uh, poor Murphy, because she's like, you have to do it. And, and Murphy's like, no, I'm not going to stick my hand in here and pump her heart. But um, it, it does make you wonder how this whole situation is going, because we still don't see, we still haven't, I do want to know what happened to the Ice Nation King as well as, you know, where everyone stands, like what's going to happen. I feel like obviously they're going to need a new commander. And it's still Luna is out there, got a, you know, on that rig. So it's like some shape or form next season is going to tie back in. I mean, I don't even know this is being brought back for another season. I hope it is. So I think it is. I think it's doing pretty well. I haven't heard anything, but you, you never know what these type of shows. But it's like I do wonder, like how this whole, how like how do you stop some situation like that? Like a nuclear plant, multiple nuclear plants going off. So I don't know. We'll just have to wait till next season to really find out like what they're gonna do. And now I'm moving on to this week's episode of Orphan Black, which in this episode we finally got to see, I guess I can only assume it's the final bit about Beth's kind of saga that we never really got to find out. It's like when she had that blonde wig and a gun, where she went and why she came back covered in blood, what this all meant. But we finally found out what the other side of it was, that basically she went to confront uh, Susan Duncan and ended up having a gun on her and everything, was going to shoot her, but then uh, she kind of backed down because Susan kind of talked about the fact is that she does care about them. She even brought up the fact is knowing her mom, she's like, I've always kept an eye on you, that she loves all the girls, like all the leaders, that basically she cares about the fact is that, um, Beth, uh, you know, didn't, didn't know her dad. It was kind of a, someone who kind of slipped through the system. So it makes you wonder, is that going to come back in some shape or form? Like her not knowing her dad or whatever. I, who knows what kind of role that might play in things. But that had the, uh, we also, um, like she was, she just told her to close her eyes and then she walked away. We end up finding out later on what that was all about. I mean, and that leads to the whole big twist in the episode is basically that, the reason why Beth killed herself was because she did learn the truth. And basically, Beth knowing the truth meant that 
basically the neolutionists were going to be coming after her hard and if they came after her they'd basically go after everyone else in her life meaning Cosima um, even though they didn't know her at the time or kind of really know of her existence but it would come after MK Allison Paul which in my mind I'm like you kind of really wouldn't care about Paul I mean especially because you had a gun on him because you found out he's in her monitor but at the same time even though Paul necessarily didn't never feel the same way about her, because that was kind of the sad truth, because she was just a job for him. He cared about her on some level, but not nearly to the extent he ended up, you know, he ended up falling in love with Sarah, but he didn't love Beth. But Beth didn't love him, so she didn't want his life kind of being torn apart. Because even after everything that was kind of said and done, she still on some level cared about him. So she didn't want the rest of the people in her life to be dissected. So that's why she ended up killing herself, because it was the only, like by her dying. And keeping everything she learned to herself, it ended up meaning that they wouldn't come after everyone else. So they were all left alone, too. I did like, you know, we finally kind of got to a compromise. Because basically, Sarah was going to make a deal. With, because, you know, Kasima brought the whole situation about uh, Kendall to uh, Sarah about, um, you know, the Susan that Susan had brought up. And essentially, they were making a deal that basically Kendall's cancer, I mean, that came out. She finally told Siobhan, and Siobhan was like, you should have told me, Ma. We can do something about it. It's like there's nothing that can't be done. But basically, her cancer can help them because essentially, for, they were never able to look at her DNA and was able to separate the caster from the leader. But because of the cancer, it ended up helping them determine which one was Lita, which one was, uh, which was Lita and which was... Um, Castor and essentially they needed a, a clean um, cell basically like you know like they had multiplied and there was different cancers in it but I think they like needed the original uh, unaffected cell or something I, I don't know it kind of went over my head a little bit but essentially uh, what they what they kind of promised to uh, Susan was basically okay we'll give you Kendall's DNA and genome but we will not give you the Castor side of it. We will only give you Lita. Because basically Castor can't be trusted because they will use Castor and recreate more Castors. But Castors are weapons. Litas, they're not. They were just 100% like an experiment for the sole purpose of just trying to perfect humanity in a sense. You know, because Susan in her own way really legitimately cared about them. I mean, I doubt Rebecca. I mean, no, I, I always kind of, it's either Rebecca or Veronica. I kind of call her about, I mean, Rachel. I'm sure she would kind of disagree because she was kind of left behind in that regard. But it was coming down to that, which, you know, Susan kind of took the deal. But her uh, lover, her caster lover, who I'm finally saying his name, Ira, didn't appreciate it. Because basically, like, you care more about your experiments than you do me. Because it's like this whole situation is going to end with me dying. Because it's like, you'll get your leaders, you'll get your experiments, but I will die. And she's like, it's not like that. I will find you a cure, I promise you. And basically, uh, Kendall ended up getting kidnapped. And it's just like, oh, well, obviously, it's freaking Ira. And it's like, no, I did like that twist. It's not him because he was off medicating himself. He almost tried to kill himself just because he didn't want to get to the point of glitching. He hasn't gotten to that point yet, but it's only a matter of time until he glitches out. Which makes me wonder about the whole Mark situation. We ain't seen him in a while. And it's like, eventually, uh, he will, too. Uh, we also found out what those things do because apparently they do different things to different people leaky had his the little mechanical bots his came from the fact is that he was uh genetically uh predisposition to have alzheimer's it was meant to fight alzheimer's so that's what its purpose was sarah's was basically to inject the virus and like the sickness and to make her sick i think that's what happened back in well no it's essentially what happened in in season three, where they basically kind of made Sarah sick because basically she proved that she could fight back the sickness because she, in some regards, has some immunity to it. So basically, it was kind of meant to study her and basically uh, activate it so that basically she would die. It was meant to make her sick, which which I'm trying to understand whether that means it actually went off and it made which they make it seem like it didn't actually ever activate. You know, it's. Um, what it was meant to do because uh but they they ended up removing it after everything was said and done um it did like almost pop open but you know a little help, help um help from Kasima ended up you know 
they were able to get it out. I did like that situation because Kasima is there talking to that lady Evie, and it's constantly like oh, kind of asking all these questions about like oh the way it operates and stuff. And Sarah's there with her mouth open, getting it taken out like, mm -hmm. and Kasima's like sorry about asking all these questions like this. But you know, what really the real kick in the teeth is when you find out who's really behind it in this episode. It ends up being. Um, at first, it's kind of like, okay, it's that cop dude, the one that's connected to Nevolution, the one that visited Beth. And then I assume, I was like, okay, so obviously, like, he must be selling Kindle to, like, someone for the highest price. I just, that's what I kind of chalked it up to. Then it ends up turning out, it's like, nope, it's a coup. Basically, Evie set up the whole situation. Like, even back then with Beth, she sent Beth after Susan because basically she wanted Susan to die so that basically she could uh, kind of take kind of the top reins of Nevolution and kind of handle it her way. The, this whole situation is because basically she feels like clones are obsolete and that basically her bots are the way to leading to the perfect human being, which Kasima is like, you, you can't do that. Basically, like, things are the way they are. Like, you, you, you can't just, like, mess with people's lives like that, that, you know, there's no kind of way of creating the perfect person. There are, there's no set, there's no way of doing that, that people are going to have their flaws. And, you know, that's why they're trying to get rid of Kindle because they don't want any more casters or leaders. And that's what this whole situation was about. And sadly, they fucking killed Kindle, dude, bullet to the head and burned her body so that they couldn't use any DNA. And it's just like, it was it was heartbreaking to see because you see her crying and you see Kasima crying. She's telling Kasima to turn around and not to to see what was happening. It was just like heartbreaking. It's just like all this. Like she could have Evie could have left Kindle alone, but it's because Kindle if Kindle still exists, more leaders and more casters could have been created. With her going, there's no way to find a cure because they also took because basically part of the deal was getting Kasima's uh um all, you know, kind of all her research that she's done with Scott and with Delphine basically gave them like the only kind of like copies that were left because they basically, after they got that, they deleted all their information, all the information, all the studying they did that her and Scott have done, have collected, all of it was wiped away because they want to basically wait till like, you know, it's going to take a while, but eventually all the leaders and casters will eventually die out from the sicknesses. And it's just, it's sad. Because as she even admitted to, she even told Kasima, even after all this, when it was said and done, finally told her the truth, like, yeah, okay, you know, Delphine was shot, Delphine's dead, and it's just like, on top of just what happened, now breaking her even more by telling her the truth. Now, when this with this situation, I don't know if Miss S will ever forgive Sarah. She loves Sarah and everything, but this whole situation, this whole plan was Sarah's to begin with. Miss S was kind of like against it. She was like, don't do this. You're kind of putting my mom in danger. It's very interesting considering the fact is they had such a kind of bleh type of relationship to begin with, but it's like over this little bit of time that they've been together, we haven't really seen it ourselves, but we have seen them kind of like, you know, they, on small regards, they have been piecing their relationship together. They just got back into each other's lives. That's why Kendall didn't tell her from the beginning because she didn't want to be pity. She wanted to enjoy the time she had left with her daughter. And it's just like, I love what she was saying that basically like, you know, you want you to know, I want you to basically told Kasima to tell every one of them that all the other, like, you know, leaders that, she was happy to um be a part, like, you know, be a part of that family and just, you know, tell um Siobhan how much she loves her. And it's just like, it's heartbreaking that this is what it, like, it ended up coming down to that. To me, like, I was hoping that basically, I mean, this is me just praying that maybe Classes guy faked her death. That really, Kendall isn't really dead, that he faked it. I mean, in that type of situation, it's like, I don't know. The way the camera looked, you know, it was kind of like more, fo it was more focused on Casina's face and the whole background was a little blurry. There was another body back there too. I mean, that probably could have been something else. No, I forgot, I forgot. That was the, the driver, the, the guy that was going to drive for um, Kendall. So there was that. So I was thinking like maybe they end up using that body as a substitute or something, but it's like, no, just get rid of the evidence. That's what I was kind of hoping. I was like, because he's not in this a hundred percent for himself. I'm, I can, he's like only doing this honestly to protect the people he cares about. So I can only assume like, you know, this is to protect his family. 
So I was hoping in some regard he might decide, like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to help you out. But it's like, that's just me being very optimistic, but it's like very, very unlikely. It's just like, I just, it's devastating that the situation ended the way it did. And now it's like, basically it's all, it's like, where do they go from here? It's like, a part of me is like, I don't want Evie dead, dude. I mean, you know, everyone else wants it too. But like I said, I don't know how this, like things are going to work out in this situation because it's like, they literally have nothing and Kasima is running out of time. I mean, eventually the others are going to get sick too, but it's just like now they're like back to square one with nothing. And it's just like after, because if they, because they can't do anything too, because if they do go after Evie, they will basically, the entire, everyone associated with them, not just them themselves, even Felix's sister, you know, no matter what, whatever her situation may be, I'm still super reluctant to believe in her. I still think she's kind of a bad guy, but it's like, you know, even. You know, Art, who's slightly involved in all all of their lives, will be picked apart. The people who are closest to them will be in danger too. So it's like, essentially, telling Sarah to, telling Kasima to tell Sarah to kind of back down. You know, Beth did what she did because she didn't want to put them in danger. So it's time for Sarah to kind of back down too. And it's like, like I said, I don't know. Like, who knows if her and Mrs. S relationship will ever be the same because of this? Like, you know, her mom's gone forever, and you know, and. And Siobhan would blame Sarah, and rightfully so, but it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, Sarah had to do what she had to do for, like, her sisters, because they're very important to her, too. Because Siobhan did warn her that this situation was going to be, like, that uh, wasn't the right decision. But it's like, it wasn't because of Susan, it was actually because of someone else. Susan is actually on their side, because she does legitimately love and care for them. So, and, it's just what did he do now? What moves do they have left to make? I feel like probably going to have to uh, join up with Ferdinand in this situation because I feel like he's like the only ally they can turn to in this situation. But it's like, I don't know. well, he's not as powerful as he was because let's not forget MK was that a couple episodes ago took all his remaining, like the three million he had stashed away. Plus, I feel like that thing, the thing they took out of uh, Sarah, I feel like that's going to come back to haunt them in some shape or form. No, 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 I forgot, I forgot. They don't actually have that because I forgot Kasima took that off the desk uh, when uh, Evie wasn't paying attention. So she has that, so. But, man. Um, other than that, the most, like, kind of, like, slightly most lighthearted aspect of this episode because that whole situation just ended in a super bummer. I was just like, man, dude, I was, I was tearing up. I was just like, I was like, <sighs> I'm kind of glad they didn't kind of show a close-up of her catching a bullet like that, man. It's just like, that was just depressing as hell, man. But the kind of like most lighthearted aspect to this show, this episode was Crystal kind of popping up again. She popped up at the police station and Art kind of brought her in and brought uh, Felix in and kind of calmed her down. Uh, she's still kind of dumb to the whole situation because in her mind, she thinks it's just kind of like a cosmetic conspiracy is what this is all about. Like, oh, uh... The cosmetic companies are covering up the fact is they're doing kind of doing illegal stuff with um I don't know it's just it's nothing nearly at granted there are conspiracies but not to the, you know on much grander scales than that she's imagining it's like she's kind of created her in her own scenario about what's going on and I did love the fact is that Felix was there and Art was like yeah he's from uh Scotland Yard and she's like he's like he's from Scotland she's like what's that like Yard and she's like oh okay. He's like, yeah, he's from London, you know, he's out of London. And she's like, I thought you said he was from Scotland Yard, though. And just, and Felix is just like, just let it go. And then, you know, he got closer to her and she pepper sprayed him in the face. And he's just like, she just said that she kind of did that out of reaction. So that was pretty messed up. He's there to help you, keep you calm and everything. But uh, ends up getting pepper sprayed in the face for it. And um, he kind of confides in her and being like, okay, yeah. We're totally into this. Like, we end up, you know, it's like, yep, you're totally right about this whole situation. And ended up, you know, finding, they end up finding out about Delphine. I mean, Cosima ended up finding out because of Evie, but they, Crystal ended up telling. Like I said, I didn't know. Maybe that was actually something you saw in season three, but it's just like, I tried to avoid the whole seeing Delphine die because I knew it was coming up because it, it's like you seen her walk into that parking lot by herself. It's like, they're about to kill her. So I didn't watch that. So maybe Crystal was there because she said she was there and saw them shoot her. So that's when Felix and that's how it hurt. Felix and Art found out. So. But overall, just like a super depressing episode, man. It's just like that ending just like broke my heart, man. And it's like, where do, where do we go from here? Like there's, 
you know, they're going to, I mean, what's Susan going to do too now? Because like, basically it's been a coup against her. So now even, um, even, uh, even in regards of like, you know, what, what can Susan do? Because there's nothing left of Kendall's um, DNA anywhere too. So, because Sarah ended up destroying it because she thought Susan had betrayed her. So, the sample that uh, Scott was preparing. Uh, I don't know, man. It does make you wonder: Is this really everything from Beth's side of the story? We've seen most of it now. We've seen the reason why she killed herself. But the fact is, it didn't end with just like her on the train tracks. We've seen it leading up to that. But it's like maybe there's a little bit more to this Beth story that we just haven't seen yet. Or maybe they were just like, yeah, we'll let your mind go towards that because we don't kind of want to show it. You know, it's a little depressing. But it's like to me, the fact is that they had because I thought that last time it's like. We didn't know why she did that situation, but it, like why she killed herself. Now we do, but it's like they still haven't actually shown it. So like, I she wasn't necessarily wearing those clothes that she died in. So that's why I'm wondering: Did she do it that specific night, or was there a little bit more to it? Granted, I did like the fact is that she beat the shit out of Evie. Like she pissed and whipped the hell out of her. And if it wasn't for that cop with the glasses, like she probably would have killed her. He's like, I don't want to shoot shoot a cop, and she's like, I don't want to shoot it neither. Basically, like, is it true that basically my uh, my sisters will be in trouble because of what I know? So, like I said, that got her. That's why she kind of pushed MK away. And I guess in a sense, all I guess MK ended up finding out some tr level of truth from that. Well, maybe MK never really knew anything. Like she just based on the limited information she had and the way Beth was reacting to the fact, fact is that Beth ended up killing herself. Maybe that's why MK was pushing so hard for Sarah just to let it go. It's not because she, because MK is just as much in the dark as Sarah is, but it's because she saw what happened to um Beth that she wanted to kind of prevent that from happening to Sarah. And it's just like, I don't know, because I thought it was just like, oh, you know, because that's kind of the impression they make it seem like that Beth killed herself because she just couldn't handle the situation. But in regards, it's like, no, she ended up finding out this whole situation and she killed herself so that she could protect her sisters. And it's just like, you know, even to the very end, she was doing her best to protect them. And I just thought she would she had just falling apart because it became too much for us. Like, no, even at the very end, still protecting them. So. But that's really all I wanted to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.